It was one month ago today, I was at the Capitol with a handful of Senate Democrats, D.C. Delegate Norton and Mayor Bowser, as a proposal was reintroduced that would make D.C. the 51st state. Now, just 30 days later, D.C. lawmakers are having to fight back against a historic challenge by Congress that affects the ability of the district to govern itself. And here's what it's about. This is the 275-page D.C. Revised Criminal Code Act. D.C. Council passed it, and they sent it to the Capitol, where Congress has 60 days to try and stop it. Oh, and they're trying to stop it. So a resolution of disapproval. It passed the House, and now it's sitting in the Senate. But here's an interesting quirk, right? Most legislation in the Senate, it requires a 60-vote threshold to pass the filibuster rule. You know about this. Not this one. Only a majority of votes are needed, 51 votes, to pass this measure. So D.C. can only afford two Democrats to defect and vote with the GOP. Then the bill goes to the White House, where President Biden is signaling that he'd use his veto pen for the first time in his presidency. But he hasn't outright said it. Now, I spoke to Tennessee Republican Senator Bill Haggerty, who's the main sponsor of this bill, to try and overturn D.C.'s Criminal Code Act. I'm not bigfooting the D.C. City Council. They, in essence, bigfooted their own mayor. Mayor Bowser vetoed this. They overrode the veto. I think what they're trying to do is send some sort of, you know, woke signaling to the world. But they're putting residents of D.C. Uh, at, at greater risk of harm, at greater risk of, of having their property stolen. Uh, they're going to make the district a much less safe place by lowering penalties and, frankly, incentivizing more crime. All right, with us tonight is D.C. Attorney General Brian Schwab. General Schwab, thank you so much for joining us. You, along with all 13 members of the D.C. Council, you want hands off D.C. You've sent this letter to Majority Leader Schumer. What's the message you're trying to convey? The, the basic message is the 700,000 people who live in the District of Columbia uh, ought to have the same kind of rights that Americans across the country have to affect our own local affairs. Effectively, it's disrespectful, it's insulting to those of us who live in the district, who've worked very, very hard to make sure our city is safer, to have politicians from other states come in and tell us that our laws don't matter. So the main message is treat the residents of the District of Columbia with the respect we deserve as Americans, respect our legislation on local laws. Of course, it's written into the D.C. Home Rule Act that Congress does have the right to step in. The question here is, should they be stepping in? I want to talk to you for a second about the merits of the revised Criminal Code Act because there's been a lot of discussion. Of course, it passed uh, the House with bipartisan support, 31 members, uh, Democrats crossing over and, and voting for this. The talk that this bill would lower mandatory minimum sentences and that would somehow increase crime in the district, what do you make of that argument? Well, it's important to remember that our criminal code is more than 120 years uh, out of date. It was passed at a time where women and African Americans weren't even at the table to talk about what our criminal code should be. And after 10 plus years of working hard with a lot of input from smart people, from law enforcement, from judges, from people around the community, our council passed a revised code, 95% of which is totally uncontroversial. Uh, we have now been able to make our code, uh, get rid of some of the internal inconsistencies in the code and bring it into the modern era. We uh, model it after the model penal code, which 28 states around this country already have done. So why are Republicans in Congress so freaked out about this? Well, unfortunately, uh, crime plays to politics, and sound bites rather than sound logic oftentimes get in the way of policymaking, particularly when it comes to crime. Uh, this crime bill is not soft on crime, despite the narrative. That's a false narrative. When you look at what the crime bill actually does, it increases the sentences on several crimes, including attempted murder from five years up to more than 20 years. Mm. Uh, so the real facts don't support the narrative that some people in Congress are advancing as a soft on crime bill. Let's talk about the concerns real quick, sure. Attorney General. Let's talk about the concerns in the Senate, that all it takes is two Democrats to cross over and join the 49 Republicans who have sponsored and co-sponsored this legislation. We've got to be concerned, right, about moderate Democrats, John Tester from Montana, Joe Manchin from West Virginia, potentially even Tim Kaine in Virginia, who's up for re-election in 2024. How big of a concern is that for you? Look, my confidence is in the senators, both Republican and Democrat, who are going to try to do the right thing by the people who live in this country, including the 700,000 people who live in the District of Columbia. Get away from sound bites and look at what really is happening here. There are two things to focus on. One is a core democratic principle that the voters in the District of Columbia should have the right to control our own affairs. We pay more taxes than many, many people around the country pay. We fight in the military. We've died for our country. 
and we spent a long time trying to make our community safer. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people in Congress, Republicans especially, who, who don't believe that and don't care. Well, uh, I hope people will care. Uh, nobody cares more about being safe in the District of Columbia than the people who live here, the people who are elected to work here and make our city safer. And I have a confidence level as the chief law enforcement officer in the city, the elected law enforcement officer, that a crime bill that makes our crime laws clearer, more consistent, allow us to administer justice in an efficient, clear way, will make us a safer city. And a system that works well results in a safer city. And last question for you here, Mr. Attorney General. Uh, Council Chairman Phil Mendelson said at one point he was convinced that most people on the Hill that would be voting on this haven't even read the revised Criminal Code Act. Do you believe that? I think, unfortunately, the national politics, the divisive national politics that our country is in, use the District of Columbia as a football, as a pawn in that game. Uh, I think if the senators and their staff will read the bill, take the time to study it, they will find that this is not a soft on crime bill. It's a well thought out bill. In fact, it has sentences in it that are higher than many of the states from which they hail. Yeah. And I hope that they will also respect the core democratic value of letting the people in the District of Columbia control our own affairs. Well, they've got to take it up before May 11th. If they don't, this bill will go into effect automatically. D.C. Attorney General Brian Schwab, we appreciate your time. Thanks appreciate for coming in. Appreciate you having me. You bet.